This is, in my opinion, the best value hybrid camera on the market today. So I've had the Lumix S5 II for just over a month now, and I purchased it to replace my Fujifilm X-H2S after I was left unsatisfied with its flaky reliability, and to say that I've been happy with the switch would be an understatement. In this video, I'll also go over a few comparisons between the S5 II and the X-H2S for those who are on the fence about this camera. That said, this camera isn't perfect. There are certain things that annoy me and I will delve into all of that in this review. So watch till the end to hear all my thoughts. Also, be sure to subscribe to see more great photography content. So I heard of the S5 II like I think a lot of you watching this video would have heard about it. YouTubers getting sent them to review. Now, I was not so fortunate. I paid for this camera with my own money and while I have been in contact with Lumix Australia and shout out to Simon over there who has been very, very helpful in answering any peculiar questions that I have. I basically used them as like my own personal tech support. They have nothing to do with this video and it is not sponsored by them. And I don't know about you, but when I see a bunch of people promoting a camera as the next best thing since sliced bread, I tend to get a little apprehensive. Like, can it really be that good? Well, I'm here to tell you that yes, the S5 II really is that good. And it's so good in fact that it's definitely the best all round hybrid camera that I've ever shot with. No, it's not the highest resolution camera or the best built, but like the porridge that Goldilocks desired, to me, this thing is just right. And it comfortably excels in both video and photo applications. And the reason that I'm not even holding it right now for this video is because it's actually recording me at the moment. First of all, let's go over what I love about this camera. So the ergonomics. The S5 II is probably on par with the Ricoh GR as being one of the best design cameras I've ever tried. Every button and dial is just in the right spot and the full touchscreen menu system feels intuitive and easy to use. And I love this AF selector switch too. Everything is just like when you hold the camera, everything feels like it's in the right spot. The grip feels really, really solid. It's got a really nice textured finish. It's really, really comfortable to hold in your hand. And I also really love the feel of the shutter button and the shutter sound. Compared to the Sony a7 IV, which was a camera that I was sort of cross shopping with this one, this one doesn't sound like it's broken. <laughs> I don't understand why the shutter sounds like that though. It sounds like... I don't know, it sounds like it's broken. And then you've got the autofocus. Now, look, honestly, I haven't had any experience with Lumix cameras outside of a $9 little waterproof one, which I actually made a video on a few months back. So I have no clue what they were like pre phase Attack autofocus. I know people online said that they weren't the best for autofocus, but with the S5 II, they introduced phase Detect. And I can tell you that, especially with the latest 3.0 firmware, this thing has unbelievable autofocus performance. It is fast and most importantly, very, very accurate. And one little tip that I can give you guys as well for getting even faster autofocus is to enable something called quick AF in the menu settings, which I think stands for quick as fuck. No, no, that's, that's, that's actually not what it stands for, but it does drastically improve AF speed, especially in low light scenarios like in a nightclub with the only problem being that it seems to drain the battery just a little bit quicker. So I've actually set it to be um, an option in my quick menu where I can easily toggle it on or off depending on the situation. But I haven't actually heard many people talking about this setting before and it makes a huge improvement, especially in low light. And I am certainly a hell of a lot more confident with the S5 II compared to the X-H2S, which I mean, it was fine. It was okay for a Fuji camera. It was the best Fuji camera autofocus wise, but compared to like full frame performance, it was not even close. And so, especially, especially in video. And that's another thing as well is like the, the S5 II just for video performance, has been incredible. I mean, as someone that films, you know, themselves and stuff, having reliable autofocus is obviously really, really important for me. And this coupled with the IBIS in the S5 II have just been an absolute godsend and I've really, really enjoyed using it. A lot of reviews online have been talking about the S5 II, predominantly in the video side of things, as that's obviously, you know, where it has a lot of strengths and people, you know, obviously Lumix is really well known for their really good video cameras. Um, and look, the, the video settings are amazing as well. You've got 6K open gate, industry leading IBIS, dual native ISO, so 640 and 4000. So you get, you know, insane low light performance too. But what I really want to touch on is actually just how good of a photography camera this is. Seeing as, you know, I'm predominantly a photographer and I, the, the video stuff really only started when I started making these, these YouTube videos. So I actually had read online that Leica had a hand in developing the S5 II sensor. And it certainly shows because the colors that come out of this camera are just mwah. So, so nice. You know, 
I think being in that L Mount Alliance with Leica, and obviously Panasonic and Leica have been best friends for many, many years. Um, they've made cameras that have been rebadged as Leicas, like the Deluxe series and stuff like that. Um, obviously during the Micro Four Thirds time, Leica made a whole bunch of lenses for Panasonic cameras. And so I think that they obviously work very, very closely together. And if you know a thing or two about Leica cameras, they're some of the best cameras in the world. So it's one of those things where it's like, I definitely feel like the sensor in the S5 II is actually, it's amazing for video, but it's just as good for photography as well. It's got a 24 megapixel sensor, right? Which I thought would be like a little bit less crisp than the 40 megapixels on the X-T5. But due to the size of the sensor, you actually, in my opinion, get images that appear even crisper than the X-T5. Not as high resolution, but even crisper. But then, but then, say you do want more resolution, right? Say you're like, man, I just, you know, I really want to take some photos of like a landscape and I really, really wish that had a little bit more resolution. Well, this camera actually has a little trick up its sleeve and that is the 96 megapixel ultra high resolution mode, which you can enable from this top dial here. And Basically what this does is it internally takes a bunch of 24 megapixel images and then it merges them into one gloriously high resolution 96 megapixel raw file. Keep in mind that this is only gonna be useful for landscape or like product photography. So something where the environment or the subject does not move and you must use a tripod, otherwise you will get a result like this. <laughs> I mean, the IBIS is good, but it is not that good that you can handhold this 96 megapixel mode. Definitely, definitely don't make that mistake. And at the moment, I have four lenses for the L mount. So I have the kit 20 to 60, which the camera came with. Um, and due to a sale, I think I had basically ended up paying $50 for this lens because the camera by itself was, I think, 2550 and I paid 2000 $5.99 for the um, camera with the kit. And at first I was like, I mean, you know, this is just gonna be a throwaway lens, like whatever, I'll just, I'll get something better in the future. But I've actually been really, really impressed with it. A, 20 to 60 is a unbelievable focal range for like, it's a very, very useful focal range. It's also a very small lens too. Yes, it's a variable aperture, but it's not the end of the world. And I think definitely don't dismiss that. Like if you're in the market for, um, if you're in the market to get an S5 II, that 20 to 60 kit is going to be a really, really good lens. It's got pretty decent video autofocus as well. So it's a great vlogging lens if you want to do it for that. Um, and the focal range is just useful because we don't see a lot of these 20 to 60s. And I, I would love to see Lumix come out with a 20 to 60, like 2.8 constant aperture, maybe just a little bit bigger. That would be fantastic. I also have two of the 1.8 S primes. So I have the 35 and the 85. Uh, both of them are unbelievable. I mean, absolutely astonishingly good lenses. That 85 is like one of the best portrait lenses I've tried. And I've also got the Sigma 28 to 70 f 2.8. Um, and this is a lens which I was gonna go for the 24 to 70 but it's like double the size. And I got a really good deal on the 28 to 70. I, there was like an eBay coupon and I managed to get it for quite cheap. That lens have also been really, really good, which I, I, I'm sort of a bit apprehensive because I've obviously had some negative experiences with Fuji, uh, with Sigma lenses, sorry, on Fuji. And so I was like, oh, will this be any good? And I'm pleased to report that it's, it's damn good. It's a damn good lens. The other thing that I really enjoy is that all of those lenses, every single one, all four of those lenses all share a 67 millimeter filter thread. So I don't actually need to deal with like step up or step down rings or any of that kind of stuff. Now, I would love to try out some S Pro lenses, which are like their flagship ones, um, especially especially the 50 millimeter f1.4, which I hear is like one of the best 50 millimeters of all time. Uh, but budget hasn't allowed me to buy them yet. So Panasonic, if you want to send me some my way to test out, I will definitely not say no. So far, all the lenses have been a total joy to use. The S Primes especially, which despite their cheap feeling build quality, have optical performance, which honestly rivals, if not best, the top Fuji lenses that I've tried, which is really, really impressive. Also using vintage manual focus lenses. Um, so I've been using the Nikkor 105 2.5 and recently the Nikkor 55 millimeter f2.8, a review for that will be coming very, very soon, um, with an adapter on the S5 II. And I'm very, very pleasantly surprised at how good the manual focus performance is. So I remember before I, um, before I like bought this camera, I was trying to do some research on it. There is not a lot of like, there's not a lot of like forums or like, I feel like the community behind these cameras is definitely nowhere near as great as like Fuji. With Fuji, I feel like you can ask a question and there'll just be like a million answers to it. Or was the S5 II uh, and, and Lumix in general, I feel like obviously, I just, I don't know. It almost feels like the camera, it's definitely, it's definitely like an underdog. Um, I know, 
I know that like a lot of people, a lot of my friends that I've told, I'm like, oh, I'm getting the S5 II. They're like, I have no idea what that is. I've never heard of that camera before, which is a shame um, because it's a bloody good camera, like a really, really good camera. But one of the things that I sort of was trying to find out was I was like, how is the manual focus performance like? Because on Fuji, manual focus performance is fantastic. You got really good focus peaking. You've obviously got all your like, um, your like focus assist, all the focus assist functions are great. Well, I'm pleased to report that on the S5 II, just as good, if not even maybe even better than the Fuji. Uh, focus peaking, really, really easy to use. Um, it's got a great punch in to zoom function, which works really well. And you get, it's actually a very nice crisp high resolution image too. Um, I feel like I read somewhere that in the past it was like not very high resolution. So you would zoom in and it was like zooming in on the preview. So the like result was that you just couldn't quite tell if something was in focus, but I've gotten like crisp images with the 105 2.5 at wide open, no problems at all. Even the 55 2.8 as well has just been great to use with the with the manual focus. So I'm excited to try some M mount lenses on this camera as well. Uh, it's definitely nice to have a full frame option because you don't need to factor in crops and stuff like that with the Fuji. Um, obviously it's not as like, you know, it's not as sexy as the X-T5 with the top dials and making it all retro and stuff like that. But from an image quality perspective, it's, it's fantastic. Um, and another thing I actually really like about using manual focus lenses on this camera is that you can actually name the lens that you're using and it will automatically add it into the X of data as well as add like the focal length as well. So when you've got it all in your Lightroom or you know in your catalog basically, it's really easy to be able to just like go back and just see what lens you are actually using. Um, I do believe that you can do this with the Fuji, uh, but it is just really intuitive on the S5 II. It pops up every time you put the lens on um, and then you can switch it from whatever. I think you can, you can add in as many lenses as you want. And intuitive is just one way to describe how this camera feels because everything feels really good to use. And it's the little things that I really love, like how when you use a zoom lens, you can visually see the actual focal length change on the screen. So like it'll show you what focal length you're actually at. I don't think I've ever seen any camera do that. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure, but Canon didn't do that. Fuji definitely doesn't do that. And it seems like something really minor, but sometimes like if I'm like at a club, for example, and I'm shooting with a 24 to 70 and I want to know and I want to be shooting at 28 mil. I don't want to shoot at 24. I don't want to shoot at 29. I want to shoot at 28. It can be hard to tell, especially if on the zoom lens, it doesn't show you where the, um, where the marker is for that, for that specific focal length. So it's a small thing. I really like it. It's something that I think is really, really clever. And another thing that works really, really well with the manual focus lenses is just how damn good the IBIS is. I mean, like you can comfortably use this camera and get gimbal levels of smoothness, almost gimbal levels of smoothness with the e-stabilization turned up to maximum. Um, and with the newest update as well, I know that I've seen a bunch of comparisons. I know with the newest update, they fixed a lot of those warping problems that you had from the, in the corners. So I definitely like, with the X-H2S, I remember it was like, you had to have it basically on a tripod or you had to hold it extremely still because otherwise your image was just gonna be shaky as hell. But the S5 II, I've noticed that I can get these really nice, like, you know, handheld B-roll shots and I don't need to either worry about going crazy with the stabilization in post or any of that stuff. It's it's really, really impressive. Like you can, obviously I've used it, I've used it with a gimbal as well. Um, and it's, it's fine, it's good, but I don't feel like it's as necessary. And back to the X-H2S, honestly, it is like night and day. And speaking of night, let's talk about low light performance. Holy shit, I have no idea what Panasonic did with this sensor, but that dual native ISO means that the S5 II has high ISO performance, which honestly left me speechless the first time that I got usable images with 51,200 ISO. I mean like comparing to the Fuji, 25,600 ISO on the S5 II is like 6,400 on the X-H2S. And also when shooting video and vlog, given the base is 640 ISO versus 1250 for F-Log 2, means I no longer need to deal with a variable ND filter all the time. And the footage has so much dynamic range and it's extremely easy to grade and you can get really, really beautiful images out of it effortlessly. Vlog is fantastic. I thought F-Log 2 was good and then I tried Vlog and I was like, oh my God, this is like the next level. This just seems to be like a reoccurring thing with my experience with the S5 II. It's a camera which just gets out of the way and does the job. I feel like I can trust it to get the job done and honestly, it is yet to let me down. One of my most viewed videos is why I dumped Canon and the R6 to go all in on Fuji. So it might seem a little bit odd that not even a year later, I have semi dumped Fuji to go back to full frame. Um, and I'd like to elaborate on that because it's a decision that I don't regret making, but I still would like to explain. So when I had the Canon, um, I complained that it felt really soulless to shoot with and that the RF lenses were very, very, very expensive. 
And while the Lumix certainly doesn't have the same sex appeal that a Fuji camera has, they are unbelievable value, like really, really good value. And the best way to demonstrate that is just to, I mean, tell you how much I paid for it. I paid 2,599 Australian dollars for the S5 II plus the 20 to 60 kit lens. And I sold my X-H2S for $2,850 body only, which is still really, really cheap because if you were to buy that camera new, it would be like 3.3K. That is $250 cheaper and you get a damn good lens included, plus the S5 II was brand new. And in all areas except a couple, the S5 II trumps the X-H2S easily. And in my X-H2S review, I did say that the camera felt very, very overpriced, but nothing illustrates that point better than just how damn good the S5 II is and how affordable it is as well. But, okay, what are those areas the X-H2S is better in? I mean, what are the problems with the S5 II? What don't I like about it? Well, the list isn't very big, but there are a few things that have bugged me while using this camera. Firstly, the build quality. And I don't mean the reliability, because unlike the X-H2S, the S5 II hasn't actually glitched or broken, but the actual, like, feel in the hand feels a little cheap. Um, like I get it's not the same price point as the more flagship S1 bodies, but the camera doesn't feel anywhere near as premium as the X-H2S did. The SD card door feels like it's made out of a flimsy plastic and the flaps to cover all the ports are so flimsy and rubbery too. The lenses as well, I mean, while optically unbelievable, feel really, really cheap in the hand. They're all made out of plastic, I mean, it's not like bad plastic. It, it kind of feels, it feels similar to like Canon's like STM lenses. It's very similar to that. Maybe a little bit nicer. It's like, it's like a dense plastic, which is okay. But I mean, the S Prime sell for a thousand bucks each brand new, except for the 50 mil, which is a bit cheaper. I paid less than that. I bought them used. So I think I paid 600 bucks for the 85 and I paid 700 for the 35, um, which I'm really happy with. I think that at that price, it's, it's fair. Uh, but I sort of expected that they would feel maybe a little bit better in the hand, like coming from Fujifilm, which without a doubt has the best built lenses for the money. I mean, you get a full metal build, beautiful aperture ring. They're incredible. I love the quality, like the build quality of Fuji lenses is next level. But at the end of the day, I mean, provided that the camera delivers good results and it's actually reliable, so far it has been, I can honestly excuse the build of it because you do need to cut corners ultimately somewhere in order to get a camera this good for this cheap. And obviously, you know, Panasonic has its own like premium lenses, the S-Pro series that I talked about earlier, which I would presume would be a lot better made, but they're fairly expensive. And more importantly, honestly, if you disregard the price, absolutely fucking gigantic, which is another flaw with going up to full frame that is I have now experienced. And it's certainly not as small or as compact as a APS-C system, but in all honesty, I mean, the 1655 2.8 with the X-H2S was bigger and heavier than the S5 II with the Sigma 28 to 70. And the optical quality of both lenses is very, very similar. And yes, the Sigma or the Lumix 24 to 70 is twice the weight of that 28 to 70. And that is a big reason why I decided not to get one. 82 mil filters is another one. I've got a 77 mil variable ND and I refuse to buy a larger one because it was very expensive. <laughs> um, another thing that really annoys me is just how long it takes to review photos on the screen. So using V30 cards, which were fine in the high resolution of the X-T5, the image can sometimes take up to five to six seconds to preview, which can really, really slow you down and actually kind of pisses me off. Um, if you're trying to just like make sure you like got your exposure correct or you hit focus and stuff, I'm so used to just quickly like tapping that back button and seeing the photo, but I know Simon from Lumix told me that using V90 cards would improve it, but have you seen how expensive V90 cards are? Like they are way, they're more expensive than the equivalent CF Express cards. Like I, I can't, I can't bring myself to invest in them. Like I'm not paying 350 bucks for a 256 gig card. Like I got some Sabrent V60 cards, which were cheap on Amazon. Um, they're about $50 each and they seem to have improved the playback delay and the transferring of like larger files, especially video files has been a little bit better, but it's still not as good as it could be, which leads to the thing that I really, really, really wish that Lumix added to this camera, and that is a CF Express Type B slot. So with the CF Express Type B slot, this camera could comfortably record ProRes internally and not break a sweat. I mean, the cards are literally cheaper than the scam that is V90 SD cards, and I have, and then I'd actually have some use for the CF Express cards that I bought for my now sold XH2S. And look, seeing as the new GH7 has CF Express Type B, I have high hopes that the next flagship Lumix camera should also get them. And honestly, I cannot wait. Now, let's talk battery life because it is another thing which I read online that was an issue apparently. And while I am certainly not getting like XC5 levels of getting well over a thousand photos per charge, 
it's pretty on par with the X-H2S, I'd say, um, when it comes to filming and taking photos. So I'd say about six to 700 photos per charge. Um, and maybe like an hour and a half, two hours of video, 4K footage. I mean, it's not bad. Like you just get a bunch of extra batteries um, and obviously thankfully it charges over USB-C. So you should never really be without charge provided that you have a battery bank or something with you anyway. Now, the other question on your mind is why didn't I get the S5 2X? Surely for video work, I would prefer that, right? Well, I mean, yes, the extra video features are nice. And if you don't know what the S5 2X is, um, it's basically the exact same camera, but it is all blacked out, which, you know, depending on whether you like that or not, I suppose. And it's got a few extra features, like a couple extra video codecs and you can record like ProRes to a solid stage drive and stuff like that. And yes, they're nice. And technically speaking, it should only cost about $200 more. But when you look at the camera on sale, uh, the price difference between them was like nearly 600 Australian dollars, which for Codex, which I didn't shoot with at the moment, I mean, like, I don't really need ProRes, I don't shoot ProRes, so didn't really feel like it was worth it. Um, plus, yeah, I, I actually really like the way that the, the regular S5 II looks. I, I, I like the white text, I like the red accents, kind of reminds me of like a baby Leica SL, which it actually sort of is. Um, so another great photography YouTuber, Josh Cameron, who I, has been an absolute treasure trove of like really good Lumix knowledge. Um, he's got some really good videos on Lumix cameras and he's also the one that got me onto the Sigma 28 to 70 as well. He made a really, really good video comparing the S5 II to a Leica SL2S and I'll, I'll throw that in the description as well. Definitely be sure to check it out after this one. The results looked almost identical. I mean, by the obvious build quality improvement from getting the Leica, that's actually really, really awesome to see. And it, it further reiterates my point that I feel like the 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 like relationship between Panasonic and Leica is obviously so great that they're like clearly sharing a lot of stuff between themselves, which is great. Like everyone goes on about how good Leicas are and it's like, you can basically get one for like a fourth of the price. It's, it's just, it's really awesome to see. Um, I will say that, that I probably will end up picking up a S5 2X to have as a second body. Cause I recently did a, I did a shoot um, where like a video shoot where I needed two camera angles and I had to use my X-T5, which was fine. It does work, but the, I just, it was, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a pain kind of matching them up. So I'll probably end up getting the S5 2X at some point in the future. And look, all up, I have been very, very happy with my recent switch to the L-mount system. I think the S5 II just works really, really well for me. And I'm really, really happy with my decision to get it. And now a concern that some people have with the L-mount is that there is like a lack of lenses, which might've been valid like when it first came out, uh, when you only had like three or four lenses. But truthfully speaking, like outside of a good 28 millimeter prime lens, which I would love, I really, really wish they would do that. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if they ever will make one uh, for, for various reasons, but a good 28 mil like S prime lens, especially would be fantastic. But other than that, there's actually a really solid selection of lens options available for the system. And the cheaper like Lumix S options are actually absolutely amazing. Like the only thing on my wish list that I could say is I really wish they had aperture rings. Like that'd be fantastic. Um, but at least with this camera, because there's obviously a PASM layout, it's, it is designed to be able to just adjust everything like with the dials. So obviously front dial for aperture, redial for shutter speed, and then you've got your little wheel for ISO. Very, very similar to like when I had my 5D Mark III, or I mean, yeah, the R6 as well was, was similar to that too, um, which is amazing. It's really good. It's really fast, really easy to use. Not as fun as the X-T5 with its top dials, but definitely much quicker. And, you know, I'm definitely keen on trying out some more Sigma glass, um, seeing as with the L-mount, they are technically a first party manufacturer which is really cool. So you shouldn't, in theory, not get the same like autofocus quirks like I felt like they had on Fuji. But the big question on everyone's mind is, am I selling all of my Fuji gear? This channel has been built up on Fuji reviews and the simple answer is absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, I still love my Fujis. The two that I have kept, my X-T5 and my X-Pro1, and I still love all the compact lenses of that system too. The Zeiss 2 especially. But as far as a camera for like professional work and making these videos and, and just using it as like a work tool, I'll be doing all of that on Lumix and I have no regrets about doing that at all because while a characterful camera that is really, really fun to use is great and I, I wholeheartedly stand by the fact that you should really enjoy using the tool that you have, sometimes you just need a tool that gets the job done. And for that, the S5 II just delivers on all fronts. 
And I really, really look forward to seeing what else Lumix can deliver in the future. So I really, really high hopes that this is like a complete, you know, like pipe dream, but they'll stick the Leica SL3 sensor, that 60 megapixel one, into like an S1R2 or something with a really, really good quality build quality and stuff. And it'll have CF Express type B cards and, and it'll shoot like, you know, like 4K 120 uncropped and it'll be amazing. And I'm really excited for that. And that's my dream Lumix camera. But until then, I am very, very happy with the S5 II. And I can honestly wholeheartedly recommend picking one up if you're in the market for probably the best value hybrid camera ever. Not even, not even, not even probably. It is the best value hybrid camera ever. And I will stand by that. What do you guys think? I mean, have you ever shot with the S5 II? Do you like, what do you think about Lumix? You know, did you, did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.